Hello viewers, today I will discuss Kinpham Singh Nongre's prose or essay called The Man Eating Serpent, Youth Land. So here I would like to reiterate that some of the words are pretty tough to pronounce as uh, these, words are, these words are borrowed from the Hasi language and you all know Hasi language is from Meghalaya and that's why it will be a little bit difficult for me to pronounce in an accurate way and I'm utterly sorry for that. And uh, the writer, uh, he also belongs to Meghalaya, Silong. He works in Nehu, Northeastern Hill University. And uh, he is a poet, a writer, and he is, also an, uh, he is also a professor. So through this work, the writer has tried to depict her Khasi, sorry, her, not her, his Khasi community's myth or his Khat, his Khasi com community's belief system or custom about a snake okay? and that snake is called youth lamb. So that snake may be pretty big and that can actually eat man and that's why it is called the man eating serpent. Man e eating snake in a simple words. So from this video do not expect that I will uh, give you detailed explanation. I will just try to give you little idea about the essay. So let's read. The lesion of Youthland, it is a living one and to this day people talk about this man eating blood sucking serpent as they would talk of the plague, cancer, tuberculosis and any other killer disease. For that is what this monster represents now, the cause of a kind of deadly illness where a person loses his natural color, grows thin and weak with a strange blottedness about his face and belly. They say the keepers of this creature are still a prevalent tribe and that the killers in their employment whose business is the haunting of men for their blood and still very active in some parts of the Khasi Hills. So you will get youth land in Khasi community or in Khasi Hills. And at first, Talan did not need a keeper or a hunter to feed him with the blood of humans. But the story of how he became a blood drinker from a man eater and how he metamorphosed into a de dependent creature really began somewhere in the dim past where men and the spirits were said to have rubbed soldiers with one another. According to the legend, Thlan, Uthlan was an evil creature of supernatural powers and it was living in the wilderness of Sohra or Chera as it is known to the outside world and this was of course in an ancient period in the history of mankind. Whatever I'm saying I'm reading, you have to not it down. Okay. And this was, of course, in an ancient period in the history of mankind. And in those days, it, it was said of him that he could change his shape and size at will. So he has that capacity. He, he has the power that he could change his shape and size at his own will. But that his fondest form was that of a gigantic python. So he was just like a big python, gigantic python lying with his mammoth mouth. And his mouth was very big, large, in a cave at Dinefland. Dangland, it was a place in the western suburb of Sohra and his tail, it was tapering off towards uh, Ling Krong, okay? Ling Krong and it was some kilometers away in Sohra proper but how did Thalan come to live in that tunnel? What was his origin or lineage? This legend has this to tell to us or to the readers. Then, uh, sorry, Thalan traced his origin uh, to a dubious Dubious though godly parentess, he was the son of Ka Kama Karai. I'm sorry, I might have pronounced wrongly. Ka Kama Karai, it was deprived, deprived, deprived daughter of Yu Maolong, CM, and he was the chief god of the area around Mount Smai, and it was a village to the south of Sora. And Ka Kama Karai, uh, she herself was a deity presiding over caves and trances, but her name was associated among the god, gods with dirty living and was sent by all but the most inferior and malicious in, in the world, having lived the, the life of a wanton lady and degenerated herself to the station of an evil fairy, Ka Kama Harai. And she wa, uh, he was eventually cursed with a bastard. She was eventually cursed with a bastard and a deformed demon whose birth so roused the wrath of her father that, that she had to flee her home and look for her new hunting grounds. By and by, she came towards the northern territory of Sohra where she had decided uh, to make its beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous her permanent home. But a uh, libertine by nature, she soon found out that her child was a burden and therefore she decided to tuck him away in a cave at the foot of the Pomdaloi Falls. Falls, you all know, uh, it is found in the hills. And in the Silong or in the Meghalaya, you will get many falls. So 
it is related to their folk life, folk narrative, folk belief. And it was uh, and the cave was chosen by her for a reason because being a malignant spirit and enemy to mankind, she was determined that her son should grow up on nothing but human flesh. So she had therefore especially chosen this cave as it was en route to uh, Rangjayate. Rangjayate. It was a large town to the west of Sohra with the biggest and most popular marketplace in Rinutrap. I'm sorry for the pronunciation. In those days, and hence, much human traffic passing to and fro along this route. And so it came to pass that since the day he was installed in the cave, Talan lay in wait for the old man out, and whenever people went through it in groups of three, five, or seven, he would suck in the strangler and swallow him whole. So he was a very dangerous creature. Whoever has gone near him, he eats them. All, not, uh, means he uh, leaves no one from three, five, seven, he just eats it. And, and that was also how he earned his name. So that's why people name him the man-eating serpent or snake. But uh, by the manner of his destruction, reducing a ground, uh, grown man to nothing in a matter of moments. And when the first man, a marketer from Silhat, Silhat, uh, you must have known this thing. See, Silhat, it was a uh, district. Uh, it was in our undivided India. And it was also near our Assam or in Meghalaya. So, uh, this story might have been there before the creation of, of Silhat, right? So now it is gone to, uh, first it, it was gone to uh, Pakistan, then now it is gone to Bangladesh. Silhat, and before that, Silhat was, I, I think if I'm not wrong, it was a part of Assam as a district. From Silhat, whom the Khasis called uh, Silotia, and he vanished, the peop- he then vanished, and the people of Rangjayate and all the marketers of the area that is from Rangjayate to Silhat, they organized a big search party around what was called then the Pom Daloy Falls. Pom Daloy Falls. And the search party continued their efforts uh, for many, many weeks, but instead of finding the man or at least recovering his body for, for the last rites, more and more men were reported missing from the search party itself. And this was so alarmed that the people, they gave up the search and they went to others to seek from God the reason for this strange and evil phenomenon. Uh, God who saw everything and who perfectly understood the design of Talon to wipe out the whole human race from these beautiful hills, uh, they, he directed the ogres through signs and symbols to seek the help of Yusyam Sermo, Sermo by the name of Swedeno, who was also known throughout the land and breadth of Ri Nietre as Yusyam Karsen, the chief of all the guardian spirits whose duty uh, it was to restore health and virtue in the world. And Suidno was also a kind of Yu Rinkyu Yubesa, or the patron god of the village, with his favorite haunt locked at the sanctified grove of Letringyu to the north of Sohra, known as Kalao Suidno, whose fame as a holy place was such that even the Dakras from the plains of Surma, okay, Surma here, uh, number two, what is Dakras? Dakras, he was a person from the plains of mainland India or Bangladesh, and they, he is referred to as Dakar by Khasis. Okay. And uh, he used to come and p- perform their many uh, religious rites in it. And this powerful god was then approached and invoked with many offerings and sacrifices, and each of which was meant to paint the cruelty of talent. Talon. Talon, uh, and it was the misery of mankind, and most of all, to place before him man's ardent plea for his help and intervention uh, in ending the savagery and ruthless plunder of the malevolent creature. And as the restorer of good health in the world, Swidno on his part could not abide by Talon's mon- monstrous deeds. So he could not, so he could not, for instance, stand by and watch unconcerned while this friend of Finn was eating up the human race one by one. Therefore, he gave his word readily enough to the rescue of mankind. So here, nothing is there to explain. So whatever I had read or whatever you have seen from the screen, you can just make it out the meaning and you can note it down according to your circumstance or need or relevance. And having committed himself to the task, Swidno made his first stop at the house of the Lingdo or chief priest of law, Swidno. Appearing to him in human form, he commanded the Lingdo to build a smithy some distance away from the cave of Kalan and there to make a huge ball of iron and pair of giant tongs. And when this was done and the implements were met, Swidno approached Kalan one, one market day of the gods at Iu Bah Sohra and greeted him like a long lost friend for the, and for the two uh, knew each other well enough. So they both of them being from the world of spirits. So he says, how do you do? Um, called out Swiss Swidno to tell. It's been a long time since, since I met you. I know, um, I know. Re- return tell from his whole, it's been ages in fact since I last uh, set eyes on you. So you all know, in our old times, according to legions, birds can speak, animals can speak, plants can speak. So it is one, one of them, okay. 
and I am on my way to the market. He says that uh, I know I, I know return Dan from his whole channel, and it's been ages, in fact, since I last set eyes on you. I'm on my way to the market of the gods at Iu Bah Sohra. Would you care for anything to eat? Um, Sidna offered. I want mine. Mm, I want mine at all, said Clan. Only make sure you bring me a piece of that famous Sohra pork. So pork was famous at that time too. I have grown. I have grown a little sick of human flesh lately. After this brief exchange, Sweetna took leave of Clan and went away to the smithy, happy that his plans were going along smoothly. And at the smithy, he ordered uh, the burning of the iron ball, Clan's pieces of prime sora pork. Then come evening uh, that same day, uh, when the iron ball was burned white hot, Sweetna went back to Thames Cave, carrying with the tongs the ball of iron and said, Ahai, mm, I have brought you the pork. Open up, um, open your mouth. It's a rather large piece. Tan, who had grown enormously fat with so much human flesh, had become rather sluggish and did, didn't stir from his cave. So he became very lazy, sluggish, due to eating so many human flesh. Neither did he feel the need to stir, so for he had no reason to suspect that anything was amiss, thanking Sweetna for keeping his promise. Um means brother-in-law, okay? Um, um means brother-in-law, and it is used as an endearing team. Then he, uh, he therefore opened out his mouth to take in the pork at one gulp. So one, uh, with one gulp, he wanted to eat it, the pork. But Sweetna was not satisfied. He said, open up some more. Um, open up some more. It's larger than that. Tell him open his jaws wide till they quite shut out his eyes. And that was the moment Sweetna was waiting for. With a powerful thrust, he shoved the iron ball down the throat of Talon and immediately vanished from the spot. The white hot iron burned out. Talon's inside and all at once he began to read and scream. Those from side to side and dress about with such violence that he caused an earthquake in the whole of Sohra and the surrounding county. So he was a very power, powerful being. And it was also said that his dad throws Crows were so powerful that they caused deep cracks in the land and created one of the most famous of gorges in Sohra, which later came to be called Kariyat Maui. Maui. And it was also said that the time before his death was the toughest for the people in the area for the art suit. Hills came tumbling down with houses, and the sky was filled with so much debris that the sun, debris and gar garbage that the sun was completely blotted out. Fortunately for them, however, the quack didn't last long, for Talon died, died soon after the iron had burned through his vital parts. With the death of Talon, Sweden directed the Lingdo to call all the people of Rini Trev and also all those people in the plains of Silhat whose teeth and kin had died at the jaws of the monster to collect together by the river near his cave the following day itself so that they could all snare out his meat and eat up his flesh. Sweden was emphatic that his flesh should be eaten in one day and at the place where he was killed. Not a little bit of the flesh, he said, should be taken anywhere and left for another day. He, however, offered no explanation for his strange emphasis other than that it should be obeyed if everyone really wanted to be re rid of this evil creature. The people came from here, there, and everywhere. They conversed upon the sinister cave, hauled out Thlan from his lair and cut him to pieces, cooking the cut meat in large cauldrons and burning to cinder the rest of skin, bones, and every other part that was not eatable. All this done, they, uh, they then celebrated their triumph on a grand scale, pouring out a free liberate libation of rice beer to everyone to give their appetite a, fits as, a fine edge and kill whatever reluctance uh, there was in the way of hearty meal. Their appetite thus aroused one and all, young and old, ate, ate to their heart's content, leaving not a morsel anywhere. So the feast was over, the gathering broken up and all gone their separate ways except for the local elders who stayed behind to accomplish the ritual part of the feast and they paid obeisance to God, the keeper, the creator. And these elders also carved out on the rocks the figure of town, the serpent and all the articles used in the feast to it to enable future generations to read from them the story of the demonic creature and before leaving the place they also renamed the Pom de Loy Falls as uh Said Said or Said I I don't know so I will say Said Dinklan or Dinklin Falls meaning the place where Clan was killed and carved out. But unknown among the revealers there was one old woman who had kept back a bite of that serpent flesh for her only son who could not attend the feast. At home, she put the meat in a basket where she kept dried fish with the intention of giving to her son as soon as he returned home. But as if confounded by some mysterious power, the woman kept forgetting to give it to him until one day. When she was alone, the piece of flesh called out to her and said, Old woman, keep me and I will make you rich. I have in me the power to give you all the gold and silver in the world. Keep me and I will make you prosperous in everything that you do. So that piece of flesh from that snack who had eaten so many people from the Silhat or from the neighboring area of Meghalaya of hills, uh, Khasi hills. Okay, so that that was already killed and people were people had already eaten the meat of that snack. But this woman, she was keep on forgetting to feed that piece of meat to her son. Okay, for some re reason, and here it is said that for some powerful, so uh, for some powerful re reasons. And one day. That place called out, called out to her that old woman keep me and I will ma make you rich. I have in me the power to give you all the gold and silver in, in war. Keep me and I will make you prosperous in everything what you do. 
So that kind of thing was said by him. I mean, said by that piece of meat. Then the old woman turned towards the basket and saw a small snake looking at her and talking to her as if it were an, another human being. She suddenly remembered the piece of flesh and un- understood what was happening. The Thalem had resurrected himself from the piece of dead meat. So uh, the Thalem was very powerful. I mean, he had so many powers that he, he can even resurrect it, resurrect it himself. He can again reborn himself from the, recreate himself from the piece of dead meat. That was why Swidner Haddon had been so particular about everyone eating up his flesh. He knew about this, but now Thelen was in her house. Realizing this, he was suddenly creeped by a feeling of great dread and fear and would have rushed out of the house, but that Thelen spoke again. I have promised you riches, old woman, but think carefully what will happen to you if you in- inform on me. You are as much an enemy to mankind as I am for you. Have given me back my life. That stopped the woman. She knew only too well what would happen to her if the people discovered her error. She could easily be stoned to death. Right, and on the other hand, if she kept telling a secret, her mind in favor of preserving, oh uh, sorry, a secret, there were all those riches that thought of wealth further till that her mind in favor of preserving this demon, and that was exactly what she, she did. Telen too made her wealthy and prosperous according to his promise, but one day when he thought she will, she was finally hooked by her ill-gotten fortune, he called out to her again and said, "Old woman, look, I have kept my promise. I have made you prosperous and given you whatever you materially need. Now return my favor, bring me a god with a mark has so I can eat too." Those, that kind of thing were said by the snake. Youthland. The old woman brought him a goat with, with, with a spotted head, but instead of being pleased, then he was angry. Athlan was angry that when I asked you to bring me a goat with the mark head, what animal is this you have brought? He roared out. He was very angry, furious. Bring me someone like you. When the old woman understood that he wanted humans to eat, she trembled from head to foot and re- replied, Forgive me, my lord, but from where will I get humans for you to eat? They surely won't come of themselves. That is your business, replied by Thelen sternly. But if you don't bring me some, I shall begin feasting on your family. That kind of thing was said by that little, little snake from that, coming from that, recreating from that piece of snake, Thelen snake. And true to his words, after two or three days of her not bringing him someone, the old woman had one of her grandsons dead for no apparent reason. Now, thoroughly scared, the woman began to look around for desperate men who would kill for hire and bring back the blood of victim to her so she could feed it to her serpent. It, it was from uh, that time then that the practice of hiring paid killers or nong sonno, if I'm not wrong, nong sonno for Thailand developed. The practice of keeping Thailand for riches was also propagated by the old woman and her children till by and by it grew into a very popular evil practice in some parts of Rikhasi, notably Rishohra. Today it is said that Thailand punishes the keepers who cannot keep him keep him fed not only by killing one or two of their children, but also by saving them before the world, world by climbing onto the rooftops and assuming the form of a cat, a smelt, or several other an- animal forms. The keepers on their part would try to keep him happy by offering sacrifices in the form of blood, or when blood is hard to get, then in the form of hair, and piece of cloth cut from unsuspecting victims. So this hair or piece of cloth would then be con- converted by Thelen himself into the I- image of a particular victim, which would be made to dance on a silver plate to the airy throbbing of a small drum at midnight. At the end of this evil ritual, the serpent would feast a little on the image starting from the feet upwards. This midnight, then this midnight g- ritual would continue for some time and when nothing of the, the image is left, the real victim who would have been suffering at home all this while would eventually die. But then he's supposed to be power- powerless with those from the uh, Siam clan because Sui Suida, his de- destroyer, was himself a Siam or king, a ruler among gods, serv- servants, of, servants of the one god. So that's it. I hope you have understood the uh, story of this uh, prose. And thank you so much for watching the video. This was not an essay. I'm sorry for that. They, this is a kind of uh, folk narrative. It is a kind of from the Khasi Hill tribe. Thank you so much for watching the video.